Not only do we get uh, double doppelganger, we got double alchemize, double accuracy, double cloak and dagger. That's pretty amazing. Hmm. Curse for 250 gold is acceptable with only one fight before the shop. It's not great, but it's acceptable. Pretty scary act overall. We got Hexaghost at the end, which presents a difficult challenge for Silent, in that we have to accumulate enough damage to be able to beat that boss. Where is the Silent from? The Foglands is the, the only answer the game gives. What does that mean? No one really knows. Oof, Prosby Games. Keep on trying. That's pretty close. You'll get there. Games where you lose to the heart. How often do I feel like it was Spear and Shield's fault? I'd say half to a third of the time for me. More often on Defect um, and Watcher do Shield and Spear cause big problems. Yes, Watcher. You heard me. Okay, we can avoid the early elites. I like this 250 gold for a curse. We get a decay curse, which is not that bad, unless this is Jawworm, and we draw badly on turn one. Why do I open my mouth? That's not too bad, I guess. Definitely can't be skipping strikes here. We're def just going to have to take some damage to win this fight. Survivor Decay, sadly. Probably have to eat one more decent hit here. Six. Strike twice? I don't think so. Please, Bob. Thank you. Alright, I think all is well. No, it's not enough damage. This is why a curse first into Jawworm can be a really, really tough experience. If the draws don't line up on silent, you can just lose tons and tons of health before you know what's happening. We get through without too much problem. That's that's adequate. That's adequate. Maybe 10, 5, 10 or so health that we lost uh, that we didn't need to lose. But now we are very rich going into the shop. The Jawworm tax has been paid. And we either take an early Poison Stab as our damage starter, pretty good for Hexaghost, or we take a Well-Laid Plans to give us Retain, which is very nice, but I think I need to go with a Peace Stab to get us started here. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to just buy a Kunai on our Silent Run and have that be our start? That seems pretty reasonable. Although that doesn't help us out very much right now. We do want to maybe consider things that help us out more right now. Which would be what? War paint? Questionable. Orange pellets isn't a right now card either, or relic. We definitely want to get rid of this curse. Which leaves us with just enough money for the kunai. Literally, exactly. I mean, come on. Last year's stat said first upgrade skewer is huge run rate. That is the card for right now, is skewer. Upgrade Skewer, and we can kill an Elite pretty easily. But since we don't actually have to fight an Elite immediately, I really like Kunai. Take all the Blade Dances, Cloak and Daggers we see. Gonna be good. Oh, and some free potions. A Fairy in a Bottle and a Fear Potion. Interesting. Very interesting. I think I would have preferred to not buy Kunai at that shop, quite frankly, but there weren't enough other better things to spend money on. Bag of preparation, toolbox, bag of marbles, these are all things I would have preferentially bought over the Kunai. Didn't see him, though. Then there's a Blade Dance.
probably lose the fairy here. Mm. And the Willy plans are back, uh, but so is Backflap. Block and draw, very, very nice with Kunai, that's for sure. I'm taking that. Um, I'm probably gonna do this then. Mac flap. I'd love to fight this elite, but going to a shop will be a waste, so I'm not going to do it. At what point do I usually stop taking unupgraded cards? Usually around the start of Act 2. So it does depend on the, the deck and the cards in question, generally speaking. Okay, we do get a redundant potion, but we also do get a second blade dance, which I will happily click on. Deadly poison also maybe worth thinking about very briefly there, with Hexaghost being a thing, but I, I like where we're headed. Believe it or not, this fire potion is actually considerably worse damage-wise than the other two, I think. Although maybe fire pot, flex pot is best if there's super sentries. What we have is very good, overall. And Blade Dance hasn't been mastered yet, apparently, either. Interesting. Gotta love Lantern on Silent. Bonus energy and bonus draw on turn one. It's kind of like you get almost a bit of an extra turn. They are super sentries. Oh dear. Well, this is not what we wanted. But hopefully we draw both blade dances together and everything's good. Order? Order. We do not draw both blade dances together, alas. But we can still kill one of the sentries this turn with a flex pot, and so I shall. Stab, defend, don't backflip so that I don't shuffle without the cards. Oof. Although I'll take it. We only use one of the two potions to beat the Burning Elite, and we have plenty of health left. Would Envenom be takeable here? Yes, I think it would be takeable. Great, not necessarily, but takeable, yes. T sets. Hmm, interesting. Still, potions not bad. Third Blade Dance. Or a dodge roll. Let's... I mean, let's go with one more blade dance, because we do need more damage still. And, uh, yeah, dexterity is going to be easy to come by, I suppose. Hypnotizing colored mushrooms. Unfortunately, we don't have any mycology specialization. But we do have the ability to anger the mushrooms. We get a special relic, as well as another card reward. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. The blade dances let us distribute the damage very evenly, which I quite like here. 
I don't have to finish this one, for example. Actually, I'd rather leave it at exactly six. That's a good idea. Gen potion's pretty good. Doppelganger is interesting. Next turn, gain X energy, draw X cards. Doppelganger is something I really do tend to like, especially if you can upgrade it, as we actually can here. Another rare card, too. We're encouraged to grab early rares in order to be able to get duplicates of them. Sure. Doppelgang, rise up. That's right. All right. Upgrade the doppel, then. Make it X plus one. You can have a more explosive turn, get more energy out of the deck just a little bit. Goes a long way. Really nice with this uh, turn one. Holy moly. Doppelgang rise up indeed. Oh, or we could just kill on turn one. That also works. Rip that guy. Accuracy? Oh. Don't mind if I do. Shivs deal additional damage. Well, that's gonna kill Hexagos for us. And the Grumlin Knob besides. Oh my. Grumlin Knob, I got bad news for you. You're dead. Do I even bother using the Fear Potion here? Almost feels redundant. Simply delete the knob. Delicious weenies, thanks for the two months of support. Keep on keeping on. Okay, we do need the pure potion. I understand. Actually, we can do math. We know our exact draw next turn, which is going to be accuracy, play dance, play dance, so. We deal 7 times 8 damage. How much is that? We're going to do exactly 56 next turn. So no, we don't need to use the Fear Potion. We just need to block this turn. And that's very easy to do. Perfect. And we get a potion belt, massively rewarded for keeping the potions. Now we can keep them for a very long time indeed. And what's that? A cloak and dagger? That's a shift card. Click. Might need to use the fear potion, but overall Hexago should be very easy. With an upgraded accuracy here. Thanks, Doppelganger. Now that's a hand. String Chez. Thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Chuz. Ten damage apiece. Stick him with a pointy end. Eleven block. 
Don't mind if I do. And just like that, the fight's over. Dang. What a powerful start to a silent run. There it is, the second doppelganger. Double doppel. That'll give us progress towards the year-long challenge if we win. To get two copies of a rare card. That's kind of the whole point. So likely we're going to do the double doppel. Double doppelganger ganger. Be pretty difficult to make grand finale work here. Yeah, let's take another doppel. And then an interesting set of options for our boss relic. The Ring of the Serpent replaces our starting two draw with instead one draw per turn. Continuous card draw, very powerful. Or we could go with more energy. More energy via Coffee Dripper prevents us from sleeping at rest sites, although I'm not too worried about that. Or the Busted Crown limits our card rewards. That's pretty bad. You'll see less upgraded cards, less useful cards overall. It's tough, very tough to win a Busted Crown run. So I'm thinking Coffee Dripper here personally. We could almost think about Ring of the Serpent, although the extra turn one energy means losing that one draw on turn one is pretty bad. So I'm thinking Coffee Dripper. Is it weird to like Double Doppelganger normally? I don't think so. I, I like Doppelganger quite a bit. I like to think of it as a mediocre card with a really good upgrade. That's how I view Doppelganger. So it's really a question often of, is it Doppelganger or Doppelganger Plus? This is a big difference there. Speaking of upgrades, we have many good upgrades this act, and I see a beautiful path that hits many good upgrades and two shops to remove cards and many elites so that we can get our stuff. And that's this. We'll remove strikes. The strikes are way worse than the blade dances. Then we'll have really good defend cards and really good shiv cards. And we'll also have more upgrades. We'll upgrade the other doppelganger. We'll upgrade the remaining... Uh, Shiv cards, the Cloak and Dagger, and the Blade Dance, and life will begin to be good. These poor birds taking four hits. Uh, here's one of the risks of Double Doppelganger, by the way. As you draw them both in the same turn, it's not so good, but with upgraded Doppelganger, it is so good. That part's nice. Uh, I'm going to be playing this Cloak and Dagger, so let's knock this one and the middle one out of the sky here. then draw three more cards next turn. Yeah, if we can get a Chemical X, and we are going to be looking at a lot of shops here. Chemical X would be a very exciting find. card that would be amazing or necessary. Anything that scales with uh, attacks or cards played, like After Image, would be quite good. Another copy of Accuracy would be very welcome. Any card that scales really well with Dexterity would be quite welcome, too. Dodge a Roll is pretty good. Deflect. Terror. Hmm, frozen Eye. Card like Footwork's actually quite undesirable, because we generate so much dexterity so quickly with our cards normally, that uh, spending a power to get more dex is actually kind of not worth it that much. Panache! There's a way to deal massive damage to all enemies. Panache. Do I need a panache? It's even zero cost, which I really like about it. Prevents me from removing a strike here, which is a little questionable. It's also Frozen Eye. Yeah, I think it does seem worse than removing. We're already doing plenty of damage, for the most part. These strikes have got to go. These strikes have got to go. I'm not going to take the Frozen Eye. Not with another shop coming up. I want the ability to buy something here. And if I buy the Frozen Eye, I can't do that. We also don't have enough card draw for the Frozen Eye to actually feel good, although I really do like it with the doppelgangers, knowing exactly when we're drawing stuff.
Do your worst. Draw hmm. 10. With four days. Easy. Great fight. Great potion. Decent card. Predator plus. Next turn, draw two. Deals 20 up front. I don't know. It's not a shiv, so I don't think it's good enough. Choke is oddly powerful. If this was, if the choke was upgraded instead of the predator, I'd actually take the choke. But I think without an upgrade, it's just not quite good enough. Childish Bambino, thanks for the 300 bits. Uh-oh. Hmm. Let's start with this. Neutralize here. Blade of Dance. This is a backflip. Alright, Defend Cloak ought to be enough. This is a fight where we could use the Regen Potion. We don't need to, though. Probably one of the better fights for it. Sure. Sure. Oh, one. Have to take some damage here, unfortunately. able to block for 10. Take 8. Stinking frail. Parasite's dead next turn, which means we are in the clear here. Don't want to forget to get that last little bit of regen. Free attack turn one with Lantern. I actually don't love it that much. It's kind of nice for these elites, but we've got potions. So, I don't think so. Could have had Choke Mastery. It's true. I want an event or another combat. I think I want an event here. Oh, in an abandoned temple, we find a giant book open and riddled with cryptic writings. Three different possibilities here. The Incaridian. The Necronomicon. And the Nilri's Codex. We have to pay 21 health. Kind of annoying with Coffee Dripper. And one of the three is not good for us. Necronomicon. But I would still take it, because then we would actually want Choke. We get the Incaridian. Free power on turn one, and that's excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Probably my favorite one to get there by far. Tempting to upgrade Doppel first. Let's do that. More draw, more energy. All right, let's see how this first elite goes. This could be bad. Uh, not good. That's for sure. Would definitely be a time to think about Distilled Chaos. Particularly if Distilled Chaos hits uh, Doppelganger. We're in the we're in the clear here. I'm gonna do that. Creating Shiv cards would also be good. I guess we should play the Shivs first, then. But then, hmm, Distilled Doppel won't work. That's a tough call. Let's do this first, then. Just just one. Make room in hand. Good luck. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, we can kill the sneaky gremlin easy peasy. Let's do that. 
Yeah, that felt like a good potion. No, I'm not concerned. Beautiful. Want to lay down, no damage taken. Gaining the shovel. Can now dig for relics at rest sites. Curious. No discard in the deck. That reflex looks pretty weak. Relics are actually quite good, though. Um, relics really benefit a Blade Dance style deck quite a lot. Shuriken, Ornamental Fan. Just to name a few would be really good here. So maybe we'll be digging instead of uh, upgrading here. Got the doubles upgraded. Yeah, let's do it. Let's start digging. I'm down. Give me a relic. The blood vial. Heal two. At the start of each fight. Give me another relic. Akabeko. First attack each combat deals eight more damage. It's actually not that good here. I'm gonna skip that one. Dig again. The preserved insect. Enemies in elite rooms are much easier to kill. Nice timing, Shovel. And the shop offers me a strange spoon. Cards that exhaust when played will instead discard half the time. Oof. How about instead I take a trip, apply two vulnerable for zero cost in addition to a card remove? Strange spoon is definitely not something you want with shivs. Chance to not exhaust things, although the strange spoon doppelgangers would be cool. The shivs, not so much. Good opportunity to buy a potion, too, although I think we're about to crush everything. Is dodge a roll worth 54 gold here? I don't think it is. I think we can happily pick up a block card, a deflect, a backflip, a dodge roll. But we don't need to, uh, another cloak and dagger, but we don't need to pay money for this one. Let's take a trip. Reusable, zero cost, vulnerable. You love to see it. Might be a third done, Harry Oz, but I think it's the easy third. I think we have a long way to go yet for this challenge. A pretty bad turn one draw. This also would have been a good distilled chaos turn. Dang. Uh, do we need to use the attack potion? Choke or finisher would both do wonders here. Well, I currently have exactly six attacks, so I could just get double kunai and block pretty happily. It'd be really nice if I could kill you on turn one, though. How much damage do I have? Uh, 12, 21. So I need 15. Not many attacks that do that, but there are a few. Flechettes is one of them, right? One, two, three, four, five. That does 20 damage. Perfect. Dash is also very good here, but doesn't get the kill like the Flechettes does. this turn as much. But that turn's great. Courier! Merchant is cheaper and has a restock feature. And here's Alchemize to generate potions for us. With this many potion slots, Alchemize is incredible. Any scenario where Spoon Shift could be good? Oh yeah, if you've got enough card draw, anything can be good. Since there's zero cost, I could see them being quite nice. Lodestar 8-1, back to supporting the Spire. Heck, you could have an unceasing top deck where uh, Spoon Shiv is good. And the goal is actually to fill the deck with as many Shivs as possible, so you can play as many as possible. Wouldn't that be neat? Bazinga! Thanks for four months of support as well. 
Take it out, come eyes. Let's try not to die to the snake plant. Not having a piercing well yet is a bit spooky. Draw 10. Should be easy enough to block that way, right? Beautiful. All these doppelgangers are really tying the whole deck together. You'll love to see it. So close. Look at that. Perfect snake plant fight. Very nice. Perfect plus gain a potion snake plant fight. There's a backflip plus. That's the kind of card we want more than we wanted the, to pay 54 gold for a dodge and roll. Why do that? Well, we can just take this for free. Piercing Whale also quite nice, but it's no backflip plus with the, with the kunai. No way. Free and Venom, how courteous. Thanks. So you apply poison with our attacks for this fight. Easy. Me some cards. What I like most about Doppelganger is that it allows you to transfer energy from turns where you don't need it, turns where the enemy is not attacking you or is buffing into energy on turns where you really need to get a lot done all at once. Beautiful when it works out. Just beautiful. Got a blue candle. We can now play curse cards. There's another dodge roll, an acrobatics, or a blade dance. I think I'll be taking the dodge roll. We do actually want some block proper. Acro is pretty tempting, though. But I think because we have double doppelganger, double backflip, we're already getting the card draw we need a lot of the time. that dodger roll. Keep digging or do we upgrade? Upgrade shiv cards. Upgrading alchemize is definitely tempting at this point. Could upgrade dodge roll or blade dance, but I think we just keep digging, quite frankly. Now we want an Envenom. Sneko Skull says, whenever we apply poison, make it one more. That's pretty good. Also use stuff like Blessing of the Forge to get key upgrades. We'll use this one now. We're gonna have a time. That's a lot of dexterity. Done. Let's draw two more. Um, we'll wait on that actually. Half health for champ is 220. Upon dropping below half, champ will alter their behavior, his behavior. So let's wait a turn here. 21. Keep some of those shivs. Uh, you're going below half this turn no matter what, so might as well make it official. This would be a great turn to draw a doppelganger. Did not. This would be a great turn to use the fear potion. Yes. To 
didn't quite go as planned. Looks like we're done, though. GG. Mr. Chen. GG. There it is, and Venom is here to go with our Sneko Skull Millions of Shiv strategy. We already have the second doppelganger. We could go triple ganger. But seems to me this interaction definitely makes the Invenom tempting. There's also Storm of Steel as another way to get shivs. But I don't find it a particularly compelling one. How does this deck do against Time Eater? With these, with if, if we take the Invenom, we're going to absolutely slaughter Time Eater. Not afraid of Time Eater whatsoever. Hmm. Do we go more energy, Sozu or Runic Dome, or we could take bonus relics from Elites, which I quite like. We've got the Preserved Insect already. I just said that a deck with this many shivs wants more relics. Again, we want Ornamental Fan or Shuriken or something. Kashmir, thanks for two months. It's nice to see you too. Yeah, Sozu Alchemize Potion Belt is a no-no. Runic Dome making us unable to see what the enemies are doing is a little tricky, although we definitely appreciate the fifth energy. I'll take the Black Star. Although I'll, I'll note that that's a pretty good Runic Dome. That we could have very reasonably taken had we wanted. Max Elites is going to be three, and three we shall do. Even get several upgrades slash digs along the way. And you better believe I am going to look at three events before the shop. I'm praying we get offered 999 gold here. Please make it so. Double Invenom. The Reinvenomation. Convincing spiker answer, too. Second copy of Poison Stab? I mean, yeah, why not? Upgraded. It's actually very good poison with the Ad Venom. Sure. Twelve cards, match them to keep them. The offered flechettes, neutralize. There's Storm of Steel again. Dagger throw, flechettes. Shame, don't look at a new card because it could be an injury. Dagger throw, no thanks. Yeah, sorry, with, with Venom rather. It's a, and Sneko Skull. It's going to be five plus two poison from this poison stab. Seven poison. Pretty good. Almost as much as the Deadly Poison Plus, except it's also going to work for the Kunai. Ah, good old Infinite Blades. Why not, right? When one blade isn't enough, try lots more. Ordan22, thanks for the Tier 1 sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Welcome, welcome. Hmm. I'm going to kill you now. These are going to be eight each. Eight times nine is lots. You winning, son? It's okay to use potions relatively recklessly because of our constant regeneration of them. Blur versus Acro. Why 
gonna take the blur. And we get to duplicate a card in the deck. Oh my. Double alchemize. Double upgraded doppelganger. Doubling the unupgraded in Venom is a possibility, but one I don't particularly like. We could dupe our neutralize or our survivor as well. Heck, even just a basic dupe backflip is quite reasonable. But I think this is a good one for alchemize. Alchemize or Neutralize, actually. Second Accuracy is very good here as well, if we really want to bust down the door damage-wise. And we do. Let's do that, actually. I'll do the Upgraded Accuracy. And then what else do we duplicate? <laughs> we get another choice. If we want one. The mirror. A third accuracy. Do you like the idea of survivor? I'm worried we're at too many blocks. I actually think we might actually not want to duplicate anything. We might want to just remove a strike here. That's what I'm going to do. Not taking infinite blades. Or even that acrobatics, actually. You heard me. I think this might be our last dig. There it is, the ornamental fan. For three attacks played in one turn, we get four block. We've been looking for... I've, I've mentioned this thing three or four times this run, and finally we get there just through sheer relic quantity. Excellent. Excellent finds. Thousand Cuts is amazing here. Power... No, that's another dupe pot. Two dupe pots. Very good. Now it's just silly. Good. Yeah, no, seven poison from one poison stab. Forget the accuracy for the moment. Oh, love that. Okay, that's fine. Beautiful. Mega Marbles will make enemies vulnerable on turn one. Smiling Mask means we get one more cheap remove this run. That's pretty good. And a second Cloak and Dagger. Another card we haven't mastered and fits in perfectly with the deck. Welcome. This potion could be a big deal if we can find a combo for it. I'm going to discard the Strength Potion since we have so many other ways to scale our damage. Damage shit. Double speed potion. Another backflip. Or a bouncing flask plus, which applies four poison four times. That's a ton of poison. And if we weren't doing kunai plus ornamental fan things, I would actually consider taking it. 
think one speed potion's enough. Nunchaku, another very good relic. Every time we play 10 attacks, gain one energy. That's huge, huge, huge for what we're doing here. Just huge. Enormously big. Twenty-four damage. Shoots. I could have just duped five and killed on turn one here. Let's do the following: Gen potion, duplication potion, double alchemize, generate two new potions. Is that good? Not sure. But we're here now. That's what matters. Toxic Egg, you're way too late, I think. All skills will be upgraded now. 10 max health is definitely welcome, though. And these are not. No, I'm sorry. Another merchant appears, offering us the Ori. Look at five card wards with all upgraded skills. Leg Sweep for only 34 gold seems like a steal without good weaken in the deck. And we can afford a card remove atop that. Really incredible, actually. I think I am going to look at this Ori. Shame about calipers, but Blur is fine. We got Ori. Another Alchemize? Heck yeah. Terror Plus is here. Acrobatics Plus is here. We could do double backstab if we wanted to. Finisher is here. Double Terror Plus. Do I make this a triple terror run? I mean, we've already got the trip. We don't actually need terror, do we? But just being able to have two terrors is still kind of amazing. I don't think I want to do double backstab. No. So let's go alchemize, terror, acro. I'm actually going to skip the finisher, I think. Terror again. I agree. Finisher feels unnecessary. The redundant terrors will actually get work pretty well with the artifact, too. Although, and Venom? I don't know. We don't want to add too many cards. Oh, and we're actually one gold short of Leg Sweep card remove. Bummer. Alright, Leg Sweep. Not today. Sorry. Hope that wasn't a terrible choice. I think we'll be okay. Pretty, pretty good feelings by and large here. Deal four less unblocked attack damage up to five. One more blade dance plus for the road. I mean, yeah, let's go for a fourth. They're so good. No longer afraid of beat of death or anything like that because of the ornamental fan and the kunai together. Dog Barker, appreciate you. Thank you so much for 27 months. I really do want to upgrade in Venom, so yeah, we'll do this. And that's why you bring two terrors. One for you, and one for you.
101 turns of vulnerable. Just in case. Get him, boot. Is an Venom upgrade more necessary than a Relic? It's going to be reliably one energy per fight, which I think is probably better than what a Relic is like to be. Whoops. Likely to be. As always, though, it depends on which Relic exactly. Which there's no way to know. Okay, let's lose the Poison Pot for that. Another backflip plus, you betcha. How's it going, SRF? Did you hear about the silent who invented a new kind of shiv? Cutting edge technology. Serpak, thanks for 28 months of support. Much love. Yeah, we're gonna upgrade the uh, Invenom. It's really important that we get this into play and uh, two cost is very expensive. An oldie but a goodie. Thanks for being a part of the community for so long, SRF. Appreciate ya. It's always nice to see the same names come back year after year in, in Twitch chat, just saying hello. Even if you're not subbed or don't donate to the stream regularly, I really just appreciate every face who uh, comes by. We we're talking earlier, part of the thing about having the, the sponsored content on the stream, we're going to be doing HelloFresh shortly here, is that uh, I don't need to ask for as much from the community. And I know since times are hard for many, it's uh, my pleasure to be able to provide content that is paid only by those who can afford to and free for everybody else. Good to have you. Uh, yeah, let's use this. Skid Marmy Mark, thank you so much for the two months of support. Oh, there it is, the Ancient Potion. I was hoping we'd find one to go with the Speed Potion. Now we've got these two potions ideally locked in for the rest of this fight, for the rest of this run. Whatever you want to call it. Actually not quite full blocking this turn, but that's okay. Next turn, we're going to have lots of draw on energy. With which to do anything in the world. YOLO. Oh, and we hit Doppelganger with a Distilled Chaos, which means we draw 10 additional cards next turn and gain 10 additional energy next turn. Fun fact, if a Distilled Chaos or similar effect plays an X cost card from your draw pile, your current energy is calculated for the value of the card, but you don't actually spend any of the energy. So we got 10 energy, 10 draw next turn for nothing. Oh, and a second Ancient Potion. Excellent. Things are really looking up. Where is good here? The pop. Draw 10. Amazing. You have a terror as well. Strikes would actually be more desirable than some of these cards, but not much more. Let's go and Failey. Yeah, you came back to some some serious nonsense, that's for sure.
GG, Donu and Deka. What a one-sided battle that was. Who's next? Time Eater. The chat was wondering, how do the deck do versus Time Eater when you are reliant on so many card plays per turn? Short answer is that if you can play exactly 12 cards each turn, Time Eater's really not that bad, usually. Also got lots of potions to spend. I'm actually going to do this. Just be intangible for two turns at the start of this fight. And then we're going to rely on Doppelganger to round us out here. Yeah, having two copies of Accuracy is also going to massively, massively help here. Like so. Let's go Blur, Cloak, Doppel again. Yeah, who even cares about minus one dex per turn, right? Doesn't even matter. I do want to play all three of these. I could also play this if I wanted to. But I do. So on this turn, Time Eater will purge all debuffs from themselves. Let's just get rid of one Slime and one Terror. The Poison Stab won't matter. And here we go. Five more cards. Perfect. Istra Balagina, thanks so much for the very generous five gifted subs. Welcome, everybody, to the Cozy Sim Club. Oh, Time Eater does get a little bit of a hit in here. Not so easy now. And another hit here. Yeah, it's weird seeing the five, uh, the five hands, five card hands. Normally, we're we're able to win the fight before this starts to happen to us. The backflips and the acrobatics also help a lot. Not as bad as it might have looked initially, thankfully. GG, time meters down. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be followed throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these handcrafted pointy objects? You prepare your numerous shivs, stabbing the heart 2,362 times. A pointed statement. Okay, one more dig for the room. Get the Mercury Hourglass. Three damage per turn to all enemies. Not exactly a particularly powerful relic, but it sure helps. So, why not? Let's get one last card removed for the road, unless I feel very motivated to add one of the cards or potions that this shop offers. I, I really don't. Silent has an appointment with the heart. Fortunately, she's sharply dressed. Gambler's Brew could be very powerful, that is true. Pretty happy with the potion array we have. Get in Venom for free against these two nerds, and guess what? Doppelganger turn one with the infinite energy. You'd love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. Let's do Cloak first, remove that, then Trip, and Weaken, and then Draw. Six additional cards next turn. Let's go. Tonk. Beautiful. 
to the other doppelganger. And Atu, thanks for the 23 bits. You magnificent viewer, thank you. All right, we'll drink this to start. Another block potion, how quaint. Just trying to make room in hand so I can play the acrobatics meaningfully. There we go. There we are. Get this crap out of my hand. Easy. Just don't do anything. All right, just draw more next turn then. Beautiful. GG nerd. Could have maybe tried to get one more new potion, but I'm pretty happy with the block potion. Got an oddly smooth stone, so one flat deck's added to everything else. Centennial puzzle will draw some cards. And last chance at one of these, no pairings to be found. I'm okay with that. Let's go. Don't need the fear potion with two terrors. Are we sure we don't need more vulnerable? I'm pretty sure. All right, Mr. Hart, our free power is a noxious fumes. Can't say that's the best, but that's all right. We are going to gain five dexterity to start. And what do I feel the need to duplicate? I'm not sure yet. Alright, we're definitely going to be playing some of this turn one. Play this. Could dupe the Alchemize. I'd rather just play the Alchemize one time. Keep the dupe pot. Draw three. Pretty good here. I'll use that now. After the Blade Dance, that is. Dupe Accuracy is okay. We might dupe Blur, dupe Doppelganger. A couple other options there. Dodger roll, poison stab. That's probably what I'm going to do here. Actually, I can do poison stab, cloak, and dagger. Dodger roll if I want to. I think I'd rather have the Ninjaku energy next turn, but I do gain one more dex this way. I think I'd rather have the energy next turn. Six. Sure. How's it going, Shaw Schnuffet? Welcome. Hope all is well in Germany. I don't need this terror, although I'll probably play it just so that we don't draw it again. We start with backflip here. Actually, maybe wanted to consider dupe pot on the neutralize because it was my only weakness. Something we failed to acquire since we didn't buy that leg sweep. There's definitely no need for trip to get played. I'm gonna keep this doppelganger. Let's focus on blocking here. There we go. I think this is the card I do pot, this doppelganger. I 
So if I play all four cards in my hand, I'll have two energy left, makes it a three energy doppelganger, doubling that will cross full ten. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we go defend first. Defend accuracy, blade dance, blade dance. We do take some beat of death here. This, our draw would have been a lot shorter if, um, if I'd done that differently. We would be very dead on this turn, but we're not. Good. Uh, start with defend? Yeah. Next spot, that's good. Don't need to play the trip. It's already mostly there. This would give us more damage, more dexterity, might as well. But I don't know why they play all three. Four of these. Let's see here. Yes, we can play the last one. And that too. Hey, good turn. Still doppelgangers in this deck. Definitely love to see that. Play Doppel? I think that's right. So we might as well just get as much dexterity as possible this turn. Twenty-six block next turn, please. Not that I need it. GG, Mr. Hart. GG. Now that's a knife deck. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.